autocorrelation. Now, in this lecture, we are going to go ahead and begin with the concept of autocorrelation. Auto means cell. Correlation means related to each other. So the question that we are asking now is what happens if the error terms are correlated with each other? In this aspect, we are going to go ahead and ask the following question. First of all, what is the nature of autocorrelation? What are the theoretical consequences of autocorrelation? What are the practical consequences of autocorrelation? Autocorrelation relates to error term, but UIs are not observable. Then how to detect autocorrelation? Remember, error of the population is not uh, known to us. All we can see is EIs. EIs are related to a particular sample. Then how do we go ahead and detect autocorrelation? And finally, how do we go ahead and resolve the problem of autocorrelation? These are some of the issues that we would be addressing as part of this chapter. To begin with, let's go ahead and understand that just like heteroscedasticity, autocorrelation also has estimators that are unbiased, that are linear, but they are not efficient. They do not have the minimum variance. The reason is simple that, you know, sigma hat square is summation EI square by N minus K because EIs are linked to each other. It affects EI square and this sigma hat square enters the variance of betas. So ultimately it is affecting the variance of the betas because the variance of the betas gets affected. Therefore, autocorrelation just like you know, heteroscedasticity has the properties of linear being met, unbiased being met, but they're not efficient. They do not have the minimum variance. Since emphasis is on autocorrelation, assume all other assumptions of CLRM remain intact. This is something which I really want you to understand as of now. When I'm dealing with autocorrelation, I am only dealing with autocorrelation. I will not club this with heteroscedasticity. We want to keep it simple. So this means that I'm holding homoscedasticity, holding no multicollinearity, holding that, you know, the sum of the error terms is zero, that they're normally distributed. All other assumptions are being held constant. And only then I'm focusing on autocorrelation. The nature of autocorrelation. Now, autocorrelation, let's go ahead and understand the meaning first. So what really is autocorrelation? Autocorrelation is the correlation between members of observable ordered in time. Usually, autocorrelation occurs in a time series data set. Let me give you an example. For example, if you look at the price of a stock today, right? So any share price today, it would be a reflection of what was the share price yesterday. It won't be the case that yesterday the share price was very high and today all of a sudden it is going to take a very low. This share price is going to be a reflection of this share price. If the share prices are increasing, then the next day also they will increase. If it is decreasing, next day also it will decrease. Unless some other exogenous government policy or something all of a sudden came into picture. Similarly, gold prices. Gold prices today are a reflection of the gold prices yesterday. So because prices today depend on the prices yesterday, prices today depend on the prices yesterday, here also, therefore, the problem of heteros, uh, the problem of autocorrelation. So, you know, because here also I'm talking about time, right? That one time value is associated with its previous, one time value is associated with its previous. So ideally I'm talking about autocorrelation 
over a time series data. Mostly you will see it in time series data. So autocorrelation is generally associated with the time series data, just as heteroscedasticity is associated with the cross-sectional data. Autocorrelation in cross-sectional data is called spatial autocorrelation or spatial uh, correlation uh, because it is in space rather than time. But this is something which is a very rare thing for you at least. You will not see it in this curriculum. Now, a no autocorrelation is given by this statement. So please see this. Two error terms, I and J, if the expectation expected value between ij is zero. What does this mean? This means that when I sum ui minus u bar, uj minus u bar, then this, this really by n of course, this really is zero. They're not correlated to each other. So we are saying that the expected value of the product of two different error terms ui and uj is zero. Disturbance term related to any observation is not related or influenced by the disturbance term of any other observation. Very important. So we are saying that, okay, there might have been some disturbance term. Means that, okay, I have my YIs. I gave you predictions about these YIs. When you find the error, then the error that I got in the first period is no way related to the error. It's, it's not the case that if in the first case, uh, I got a positive error, the second will also be positive. Or if in first case, I got negative error in the second also, it would be negative. So we are not going ahead and saying that these are correlated to each other in any sense. That is not what we are saying. So we are saying that whatever you know prediction error you're making here is no way correlated to the prediction error you will make here. That is what is called no autocorrelation. So the disturbance term related to any observation is not related or influenced by the term of any other observation, then that is called no autocorrelation. Okay, so see this example. If there is a labor strike affecting output this quarter, there is no reason to believe that it will be carried to the next quarter. Just because output in this quarter reduced doesn't mean that output in the next quarter will also reduce. If it reduces because of this, then there is autocorrelation. If it doesn't, then there is no autocorrelation. Take another example. The effect of increase of one family's income on its consumption is not expected to affect consumption expenditure of another family. So there is no autocorrelation. So, you know, this is actually a theory in macroeconomics. It's known as the relative income hypothesis. Actually, it suggests that by your peer pressure, if your friends are spending more, you will also spend more. Your consumption will also increase. That means there will be autocorrelation. Although this is a cross-sectional data set. I'm talking about different families, not about over different period of time. But if one family's expenditure is affecting other family's expenditure, then we are supposing that there is autocorrelation. Whereas if it is not affecting, then there is no autocorrelation. So what is correlation really? So when, you know, when or what is autocorrelation? Autocorrelation is error with itself. So, you know, when we talk about this, we are saying that this expected value is not equal to zero. There is some expected value between their cross products. Then the autocorrelation exists. So this says that disruption caused by strike this quarter affects the next quarter. Increase in consumption expenditure of one family puts pressure on the other family. If we have such situations, when one is affecting the other, then you will see that this expected value E of UI, UJ will not be equal to zero. 
or if I find out the correlation between u i u j, it will not be equal to zero. And correlation really is just covariance divided by standard errors. Okay, this the I mean standard deviation. This is correlation. So then indirectly we are saying covariance between u i u j will not be equal to zero. Then there is the problem of autocorrelation. If they are not equal to zero, then autocorrelation exists. If they are equal to zero, then no autocorrelation exists. So quickly have a look at this diagram now. Here autocorrelation is existing. Why? Because the next period, I mean, do you see this? That if, if, if you're moving towards an increasing trend, it is increasing. They're getting affected by the previous values. If you're moving towards a decreasing trend, they're decreasing. Then increasing trend, then increasing. So autocorrelation exists. Again, you're going towards a positive trend, autocorrelation exists. So I'm just putting these error terms against time and they're following a pattern. See this? Negative part, autocorrelation exists. Over time, they keep on becoming lower and lower and lower. See this? Again, a pattern is being formed over time. So autocorrelation exists. <clears throat> now, here, no autocorrelation. Because with these error terms, with time, they're just randomly you know, split everywhere. But it's not that one is affecting the value of the other. No pattern. No pattern whatsoever can be found over time. So we have no autocorrelation. I would really like you to see some of the stock market data in the real world. So let's just, let me just go show it to you over Google. So let's just do this. Let's type in stock market. And let's say maybe I'm going to show you for, uh, Maybe any share, let's say Tata Motors over time. Just showing you a normal, normal, you know, stock price. So do you see this? If, I mean, do you see that I'm able to form a trend over time? It's not that the previous value is not linked to the current value, right? So see here, if the value is some 66.35, just the next day it would be close to 66, right? But see here. If the value is 178.25, then the next period, will, it will be close to that only, right? Before also and after also, it has to be closer to that 170s range. If here it is 161, in the, in the next few days, it will be closer to that. So ideally, what we do is we actually have this concept in the stock market. We, we take price lags up to seven days. PT minus 2, PT minus 3, PT minus 4 and so on. So we say price depends up to 7 lakhs, up to 7. PT minus 6 and PT minus 7. Post this, the you know, lags are not useful in determining the current price. So it's not that, you know, in 2008, what happened is going to affect the price today. Come on, that's not going to happen. The shorter periods are going to affect the prices. Now, the question that we therefore ask is this. What are the reasons of autocorrelation? So, till now, we saw what is autocorrelation. But why do we really see autocorrelation? The first reason 
is called inertia what is inertia inertia is you know wherever we talk about time series such as gdp production employment money supply etc where they go ahead and exhibit business cycles right so what is a business cycle every um, you know every business cycle has four parts to it boom depression recession and recovery during boom and and this is going to happen to any economy okay during boom gdp will be high productions would be high employment would be more money supply would be high inflation would be high so everything is going to be high during recession gdp will be low production will be low money supply would be uh, you know would have to be somehow increased in the long run to go towards the path of recovery but prices would be low right so ideally what is going to happen all these macroeconomic variables like gdp production employment money supply etc they predominantly work on the background of these business cycles and whatever kind of business cycle really is there in my economy i mean at what phase of the business cycle i am currently there on my economy that is going to affect my variable values so you know in that sense we have i mean if i am in a period of boom and you know if i sustain in a period of boom for 2 years then output would be affected by the previous values of output then if i am in a period of recession again for the next few years next 2 years 3 years output values would be affected right so there is this dragging force to these variables now therefore in regression involving time series data observations are likely to be interdependent on correlated the second thing that happens is model specification error now please understand see a lot